Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Shrimp here with Eric Svilgoy. How you doing, sir? I'm good, sir. And I must I must say that, you know, my background behind me doesn't change because people have commented on my blue curtains and lucky roaming around on the bed behind me. But uh, I notice your background is a little different today than it normally is. Where Where are you today? Well, I'm in my, uh, the fabulous, uh, what do we call this thing? This is the actually the parlor as you come into the front of the house. Behind me through the doors, the double doors that actually have pocket doors that come, come out of the walls, it's uh, called the reception room, which is actually where they used to put dead people. Like if, if, you had a, if you had a funeral, instead of a funeral parlor, you'd actually display the, the uh, deceased in, in the box there in the, in the reception room. So, you know, God knows how many ghosts are floating around there, but that's, uh, that's what it was for. So it's our living room today, of course. You know, they haven't eaten have any dead bodies here but uh <laughs> yeah that's, but that's good yeah i've seen i've seen some older movies where they tended to do that i'm not exactly sure who the architect was that first said hey you know what we need a place to display a dead body in my plans i need to put this in the blueprints but uh it's nice to know that that did not hold all the way through the 20th century so yeah fortunately they thought well enough ahead to put room for where a tv would go so we were able to convert it fairly easily um so uh, yeah so i'm uh, i'm on pto today but i did want to uh, did want to sit down and, and of course do our re our weekly weekly retail week so uh i guess you kick it off sir what do you got all right well i guess i'm gonna act like a lawyer uh perry mason kind of attacking a uh, witness on the stand so Paul, I'm going to ask, where were you in June 2013? What were you up to? June 2013. You know, you're um, failing so far, was, man. The, the, the jury's already ready to convict you. I don't know. You know, I was probably, uh, see, we, we got done riding the ethanol wave, and I was just waiting. I was anticipating that there would be a, a significant increase in venture capital investment in technology and ag. I knew that was coming. I just, I could feel it, <laughs> but um, I think that's probably what All I was right. waiting for. <laughs> what was I doing, right. sir? Well, this the reason real. I bring up... Yeah, the reason I bring up June 2013, uh, and no one asked what I was doing because I absolutely don't remember at all, but um, that was the last time that corn prices were as high as they currently are. Uh, based on what we've heard uh, this morning from the commodity people, uh, it looks like corn's nearing $8 per bushel, which is an eight-year high. Uh, has not been that high since June 2013. Now, Paul, you may ask why that's happening, and it seems that global demand has been much stronger in 2021 than anticipated for U.S. corn. Uh, and so that is leading to some worries that supplies come the end of the year, the annual carryover may be lower than was anticipated, which means that when you have uh, more demand and less supply, of course, prices tend to go up. And that is exactly what's happening in the market right now. Yeah. You know, I had anticipate this a little bit, with, you know, post COVID being people, you know, kind of coming unleashed and doing more things. I mean, you got gas prices going up, you know, food prices are going up. Of course, now the corn's going to affect, of course, going to affect meat prices. Um, if it hasn't already, it will continue to affect that. You've got the lumber industry absolutely going berserk. Um, and, you know, housing, I mean, trying to find a, an apartment or a house. I know in our town, you know, even in Cleveland, where, you know, we're always lagging behind those kinds of things. It's, it's, it's impossible or extremely expensive. I mean, I, when my daughter moved to Nashville four years ago, finding a place less than $1,000, $1,100, it wasn't a slum, was, was almost impossible. Mean, we're getting to that point here in Cleveland, which is just, it's, it's crazy. Um, so supply, demand, I think everything's kind of coming unleashed again. And you, you wonder about inflation and you wonder about all kinds of other things as well. But I mean, certainly one of the, you know, one of the pros, at least for those selling corn, is, is going to be corn prices uh, through the roof right now, which is amazing. Yes. And before we leave this topic entirely, one of the other reasons you may be seeing corn prices going up, um, I was reading a report that said, believe it or not, even though we're only at the end of April, there are some serious drought conditions going on in parts of the United States, in particular the Dakotas. Uh, it was said that right as of this date, April 30th, or actually May 1st when this video will be airing, but 
Uh, I guess 78% of South Dakota is under drought conditions, and all of North Dakota is considered under drought conditions at this point. Uh, now, obviously, that's going to impact wheat prices. Uh, you can keep an eye on those. But uh, what may be a little less known is that North and South Dakota combined account for about 8% of U.S. corn production and 10% of U.S. soybean production. So, again, Paul, if, uh, you know, the drought conditions normally in the Dakotas show up, you know, late May, early June, July, the fact they're coming up, uh, you know, this has become an issue here at the end of April already, uh, it doesn't bode well. And again, that has, uh, you know, the commodity folks that uh, track corn and soybean a little worried that, you know, if the Dakota production for uh, corn is lower than anticipated, that again, that could cause a uh, a spike in demand uh, where there's not much corn to fill it, and uh, lo and behold, the prices will continue to go up per bushel. So that's what we'll have to see on that. Yeah, they had a, I mean, when we had the uh, prevent plant a year, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and the, the following year, the, some areas of the code has had a similar, a similar issue. Uh, but it'd be tough, tough on those folks to get yet another, uh, yeah, another year like that. Let's hope that uh, that doesn't come to pass. Yeah, I remember in 19, <clears throat> it was about three and a half uh, million acres of prevent plant in South Dakota. I don't remember North Dakota's number, but uh, so yeah, I mean, 19 wasn't the best of years. 2020, because of COVID, uh, it sounds like, you know, there were still some issues going on. And again, here, here we are in 21, when most people were anticipating might be a more quote-unquote normal year, but uh, apparently in the Dakotas now, there's a lack of moisture. So our hearts go out to you folks there in the Dakotas, and, uh, you know, drop us a line. Let us know if things are really as bad as uh, we're reading. So, Absolutely. So uh, speaking of looking out to the summer and hoping for the best, I guess we have some hopeful signs, at least in terms of in-person events and conferences coming up uh, this summer. Yes, Paul, actually, uh, for our sister publication of Crop Life, Crop Life Iron, we were doing a report talking about the upcoming uh, equipment shows that are normally a, a staple into, you know, summer and going into early fall. Uh, and I'm happy to report the checking out websites and talking to the various trade groups that put on the summer shows that uh, the ones that we're used to, Maggie, uh, Farm Progress, Farm Science Review, and Husker Harvest Days, uh, as of this date here at the end of April, they're all planning to go ahead with in-person events come summer and into September of next year. So, or this year, I mean, sorry. So uh, again, it, it uh, you know, it seems like there'll be some, some alterations because of perhaps the ongoing COVID uh, pandemic, but uh, all in all, an outdoor event uh, sounds like it would be more feasible necessarily than others. And uh, it looks like those shows as of right now, we're all planning to go full speed ahead, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Absolutely, and we're full speed ahead on Tech Hub Live in, in Des Moines, so that will be an indoor event. So be a little bit more cautious from that standpoint and follow all guidelines when it comes to the COVID and the pandemic. But we're, um, we're excited to report that uh, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of interest in the event. We've gotten, uh, you know, we're solidifying the exhibit floor. We should be uh, out with a full program here in the next week or so. Um, that's coming together very well. Um, so we're we're really excited. I think people are people are telling us that they're just excited to uh, uh, to have the opportunity to come together and and to talk to each other one on one, to kind of put Zoom aside and and and, and get back in uh, you know get back in the game, so to speak, with the handshakes and high fives and stuff like that. So we're. We're really looking forward to that. Looking forward to learning and networking and and uh, being a part uh, being a part of the you know industry uh, in an in person way. So we're uh, we're really excited. Yeah, and I know Paul. I know you said the other day in one of our internal meetings that you already booked your flights for Des Moines for July. Uh, so yes, positive thinking, my friend. Yeah, I know I'm going to have to brush up on my uh, in person communication skills. It's been a very long time who, you know, since I talked to someone other than my dog or my son or my father uh, in person for any length of time. So, uh, you know, if I bring up too much per personal stuff, people stop me. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah, you have a slideshow. You have to bring a slideshow of pictures showing the growth of your child. <laughs> I would not do that to my friends. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I wouldn't do that to my enemies. I do remember I was a kid watching that one uh, Night Gallery episode where the the guy died and he went to hell and like you know in his his version of hell there were an old couple that said they were going to show him the eighty thousand five hundred slides from their trip to Mexico and just that was <laughs> that was his that was his eternity in hell. So uh, I would not do that to anyone. Remembering that episode in my head, and he probably deserved that too. <laughs> oh, saying else today? So yeah, that's about all I got this week, Paul. So yeah, that's it. So now, hopefully, the good news continues. So we uh, we're downwind, of course, of uh, the Corn Belt a bit, and uh, we got all the rain that uh, happened there here. So we're looking for a couple of rainy days, but hopefully, some some improvement again next week. It's usual May in Cleveland. So uh, with that, we'll sign off. Yes. And thanks for joining us for this this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. And we'll see you next week. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We'll try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.